Welcome back to the Morning Brief. You just saw the movie uh, Come With Me, director debut of our next guest on the program. We talked about the successor generation of Nollywood and he's right here with us. Uh, actor, filmmaker, and now director, Baj Adibule. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, I was asked, oh, you're not a director. So yes, everybody's yeah. like, the industry is like explosive. People are just yeah. making tremendous progress. So we may have known them as actors, mm -hmm. and now they are directors. Maybe they are even executive producers mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But the natural place to start, which we always start with our, with our guests, is we like to track and curate your journey, how you stepped into this space called Nollywood. Oh, I think uh, I started when everything was not social media driven. It was still the old school, go for like a dozen auditions a month before you get your break kind of thing. So it's that, wake up 5 a.m. in the morning, go for an audition, get out, we'll, we'll get back to you, which they never do. <laughs> <laughs> so they should do that as far back as Ah, uh, what? It's a normal thing. You, you hardly get you no. Know. They'll hardly tell you no. They'll say, well, you'll get back to you. And you do, you, you, they don't. So you do that for a couple of months, then you get some small roles, uh, sometimes you play extra, one or two scenes, then finally you just happen to be in the right place at the right time, you happen to pull off the role, or maybe they just happen to like you. I want you to play the role, and you do your best and... So it's, it's more like a question of chance and opportunity. It's a little bit of chance, but oh. also you have to have done your own homework. All right. you know, they're not going to obviously give you the role if you're not in one way or the other doing a good job. So yeah, it's being in the right place at the right time, but also being prepared to actually pull it off. And speaking of tracking your journey, I was watching one of your interviews and you talked about doing engineering, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing modeling, uh, and a yeah. couple of other things before you eventually, you know, found home mm -hmm. in Nollywood. So would Nollywood have been your first choice or was, was just ac an accidental um, entry? I was, I was not even just first choice, it was only choice actually, because it was a, I needed to find where I'm supposed to be, like my purpose in life. That was pretty much what the whole doing engineering and everything was about. I was just trying things. Not in the sense of, let me find out the one I'm good at, but more of, let me find out the one that my heart is very, very tethered to, very linked to, where I feel like, yes, I'm home here. And that was the acting, because I was actually not very good, actually. I was in, but I could feel, there was just this, I don't know whether it was the atmosphere, I don't know whether it was some divine thing, I don't know. But you can feel that, yes, this, this zone, this place, this, career, this is where I'm supposed to be. Uh, and it's not your first, uh, the creative industry is not your first degree, by the way. You studied something else. Yes, I studied economics, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked for a while. I worked uh, for a year and a half. I wasn't in a bad place. It was actually nice, but I could always feel that this is not where you're supposed to be. I just didn't know where I was supposed to be, but I know it's not here. That kind of feeling. Okay, so talk to us about your directorial debut, Come Away With Me. Come With Me. Come With Me. Yes. Come With Me, it's a crime romantic thriller. It premiered in December on Prime Video. It stars myself, Ayola, Ima Oh My God, um, Rick Asani, um, Goodness Imano, and a bunch of very brilliant actors. And it follows Samira. She's uh, just a young, beautiful, naive, innocent girl who decided to go out on the night out with her friends. And she meets this charming guy and her friends motivate her like, just take a chance, just bring him home with you. And it turns out that he's actually a kidnapper. And things take off from there. Mm. Let me don't give too much away. Yeah, because I'm, 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 I'm seeing images from, from the movie yeah. and it looks, it looks so good. And it brings us to the conversation around the quality that Nollywood is churning out mm. now. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just beautiful uh, to watch. but. Uh, talk to us, how challenging was this uh, for you? Because we always see actors, uh, once you see an actor playing a rich man role, you just imagine oh, this guy is rich real life. <laughs> they don't have I challenges, wish. everything just works out for them. But you didn't just do acting, you're now directing mm -hmm. as well. So just how challenging was this? And I'm talking about in terms of uh, the budget. Budget, yeah. <laughs> budget <laughs> is number one. Is, yeah, in terms is. of budget casting, mm -hmm. ensuring the story is portrayed well. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of challenges you face. Definitely. We just see the finished work, but talk to us about those, some of those challenges. I think the only easy thing was the casting. That was the only thing that came pretty easy. Because as an actor, you've worked on a bunch of projects, so you know the actors and you know how good they are. So that part was easy, but that was the only easy part. The budgeting was a huge issue because it was my directorial debut. Yeah. So there was, there's nothing to show that if you were to give me your money, 
it would be a good film. And that's a recurring issue. Yeah, but that's normal. You know, it's your first time. No one wants but, to take but, a chance. People are now increasingly invested in Nollywood. Yeah, but you would have like now, obviously, it would be much easier for me to get uh, get uh, an investor. But then there's no proof of work. And no one wants to do that. So it's majorly you, your savings, your family, your friends, favors. You just get to put all that together and then use that to try and make your film. So it was, it was, the budgeting was pretty difficult. We had to make a lot of compromises. Mm -hmm. and most of the actors that came on board took pay cuts, actually. Oh. But the group was that they've been my friends for like donkey years. Some of them didn't even get paid. But they're my guys, so they didn't. Oh, so, yeah. so if that movie hits a billion now, you have to change. I have to call them out. So I'm owe you money. No, no, no. You have to tell me. I know. So, so I, I wanted to find out as well. Um, are, are we really telling our stories from your perspective? Because uh, when we had a conversation with the musicians, some said. Uh, when you look at the likes of Fela and the rest of mm -hmm. them, uh, today's music, not all of them, by the way. A couple of them is more escapi escapist. Uh, so that's why I'm asking, mm -hmm. for Nollywood, are we telling our stories? I think we're doing more of that now than we were before. You know, if, you, if you've noticed, there, there's a lot of um, epics, a lot of um, indigenous films, or, okay, I can't call it indigenous, it's in Nigeria, but more like you see a very Yoruba driven film or Igbo driven film or Hausa film, or you see it's, uh, the storyline is more in line with what's actually going on. Like this one, actually. This one was motivated when I saw a story of a cousin setting up his cousin. Is, is that a project fame guy? Yeah, actually. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I uh, completely uh, forgot he did project fame. He's an actor, though. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, that the lady? Yes. Let's keep doing that, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> she was in UI. Studying theater arts. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. That one. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like this one now, I was, just, uh, was motivated from watching um, news and I saw a cousin use uh, another cousin for kidnapping, actually. Mm. But his real motive was to have him killed. But he knew that if, is, if he gets kidnapped, the police won't really do much. If he's murder, it's a bigger issue. But kidnapping is, uh, let's go and find how you pay. If the person doesn't come back, then it's cool. And it was that idea that mm. moved me into making this film. So yes, I think we're doing more of our stories now than, than we did before. And it's because we've finally understood that both Nigerians, Nigerians in diaspora, non-Nigerians, people in the world, they want to see us. They want to hear our stories, not see us try to tell their own kind of stories. People are starting to buy into that. And I think yeah, we're doing more of that now. You know, and this story speaks to, you know, the social issues yeah. bedeviling us today. Yeah. I remember Cynthia Osokogo and so many other stories of young girls who have run into the hands of exactly. kidnappers mm -hmm. unsuspectingly. And, you know, it's potent. Mm -hmm. But let's go deep into the issues bedeviling the industry now. As far back as 2015, you know, um, the Nollywood industry was rated as being worth $5 billion. And that's, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, nearly eight years ago or thereabout. Still, the challenge, according to reports, is that we're unable to rival um, okay. industries like Bollywood because of limited uh, funding that mm -hmm. affects um, production quality. Mm -hmm. How do we get there? And are we close to getting there, particularly now that Nollywood has hit the one billion naira at the box office? So how close are we? I, I don't think we're close. I we're still not close. close. Yeah, I, mean, I think we're close. And it's majorly more of a, it's an overarching issue as opposed to just Nollywood. This is, the, the major tree is still Nigeria. Nollywood is just a branch. So there's just so much a branch can do if the entire tree isn't working properly. So there's always going to be that overarching problem. And then there's the part of, when you talk about even K-dramas or Korean movies or Bollywood or Hollywood, these industries are very, very well backed by the country very, very well back, not just in funding. They have very, they are protected. You can't, I can't even shoot on that street without being harassed and um, Agberi was taking over my stuff. So they are very, very well protected, very well funded, very well promoted. Here in Nigeria, Nollywood is by itself. You as a filmmaker, you are by yourself. You as an actor, you are by yourself. It's really just you are the one-man army that has to make this happen. And if we are moving like that, then we are definitely not going to be able to compete with people who are working together with the people, with the government, we're all trying to make the industry work. So till we're able to get to that level, I don't really think we'll be able to compete. But, but if you recall the days of living in bondage, you mm -hmm. know, those old films, yeah, as we said at the beginning of pro the program, Nollywood was built from ground, from ground up. up. Yeah. 
without government support and yes. limited funding yes. that you know the younger generation mm -hmm. is clamoring for now you know so what what difference do you think this generation can make if you refer to time back when you know it was built on sheer resolve yeah that's of, the thing they were working on sheer resolve now imagine if you gave them all the other resources that those other guys get to have with the sheer resolve who in my opinion, we'll not even be talking about meeting up anymore. Because the thing is, we've had to do so much with so little. We've had to do so much under very, very terrible circumstances. Now imagine if we have a little bit more, if we have more, uh, better circumstances. We'll definitely be doing a lot better than even people who are supposed to be like up there. So I think if, if the country really works in that direction, then we can now start saying we're getting close or we'll get there. But it's not looking like that's where we're headed. Mm. So. You know, some would always argue that mm, there was some government support in the start. I mean, you had politicians or people in government funding movies, mm -hmm. giving support, and then there's the National Films um, Video and Censor mm -hmm. yes, yes, there doing some work. So there's always that debate. I don't say we did support at all, at least at all at all. <laughs> we did some little, but that's another debate for another day. But, you know, this, I call it a pandemic of the people harassing you when you mm -hmm. want to shoot yeah. uh, a movie. I don't know, we've talked about this for too long. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, not just for you as a movie person, even, even for, for us. News? Oh. I mean, you want to shoot a stand-up, you want to capture a story, and people are harassing you, and you, you're wondering. First, I'm actually trying to tell this community, mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell a story. Well, there are communities that are welcoming, but overall, you'll see that you can't just stop somewhere and mm -hmm. say, I want to yeah. shoot the, the third mainland bridge, for example. Someone that just, owns that area. So. You, you get mm -hmm. it. You just park mm -hmm. the third mainland bridge, say, I want to shoot the water, just the water. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, there are like three boys around mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's a pandemic, obviously, mm -hmm. and it's affecting creativity, it's mm -hmm. affecting our output. Imagine you have to get extra security. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to do meetings with the you have, people. You almost compulsory, sort actually. Everybody. You have sort everybody. Is yeah. there a way to resolve this? Because it's, it's just, I mean, you go to other clients and you can just shoot, and, and it's good for the It's it's a, it's a much bigger problem, because it's, it's almost like a genetic problem. It's normalized already. It's not even something that you think of as something bad anymore. You expect it to happen when it's happening. So it's, it's gotten so bad that it will have to go deeper than just the problem for Nollywood. I think it's a nationwide problem because it's an Agbero problem. It's an Omaonilea problem. So if, if we don't even go as deep as just cutting that entire movement, I don't think we'll be able to stop that. So uh, what would you, if, if you were to sit with government, so let's uh, alleviate the conversation. If we were to sit with government, say Governor Babajide Sonolu or anyone, um, to propose what to do with this as you call it, Agbero and Omonile, uh, what would you propose? I don't think you want to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> why why do you say so? Why do you say that? <laughs> uh, well, they've been around with, the, they are definitely backed by the government, that's for sure. You're definitely not going to be able to do that without the government saying, giving go ahead. So you're, it's like you're asking the father of a child to not allow the child to do what the father has told him to do. You know what I mean? I don't know if that analogy... Even what the child is doing is Even if the, child, the, the child is just doing what the father has told him to do. So where, where do you want to come from? To well, tell we fathers, I would say, will you stop that? The boy, the child that told him to do it. The, the father, father that told him to do it. Yeah, the father that's an repent. indictment. The father repents, realizes wait a minute that well, what the child is so doing is, it, is, is favoring it, is that, what the father wants. Is it, is There's just no way you can. We've heard this narrative. It, pardon me, it, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying it's some sort of implicit, tacit approval from government? Or yes. You, you think it is? You guys, you have to do this to so ensure you do this to always disrupt. I, I don't imagine. No, no. It's not like they told them disrupt anyone that is filming. Yeah. Of course not. It's just there's money involved. And once there's money involved, what, when you're telling them to stop, you're telling them to take money out of people's hands. We don't do that in Nigeria. <laughs> so, so, the, so the challenge here is the fact that it's not just that they hire, it's the fact that they are not adding value not. and they are taking away value. Precisely. Which is why it's an issue. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's an issue. Yeah. It's definitely an issue. The only problem is the person that is the people benefiting from it are not going to allow it to stop. They're not. No. So how are you going to now tell them to stop it? Okay, uh, it looks like uh, no matter what we ask you in this direction, <laughs> you have made up your mind. Okay, 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 okay. Let, me, let, me, let me give a better explanation. Okay. No, 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 I understand. No, it's your experience. No, it's very important. It's, it's, it's so your experience. No, I'm just, we're just trying care. to say, uh, because when we come, we try to profess solution. But okay, I'm sure mean. that you've experienced it so much yeah. that you told yourself, <laughs> Uh, maybe not me, I'm not the guy to tell you what to do because this is a hopeless situation. Is that what you're saying? 
Okay, there's no situation that is hopeless. Mm. That's one thing. But it's... Uh, okay, the reason why I'm saying the conversation won't really make any difference is because I'm trying to tell you what you already know. You know it's bad. You know okay. it's, it's definitely a problem. That's not even the conversation. So it's not that you do not know it's a problem. The conversation is me trying to convince you to do something about it, I assume. But how do I convince you to not collect the money that you have been collecting? Because the agreements are going to tax, tax everyone that is doing stuff, and the money is going to go to whoever is sending them. So this who is this, backed this. by the government. So maybe this. Don't you think this is this will not necessitate the call for film villages all over the place? Because if you have a proper film village, yeah, yeah, I think I heard Kunle Afolaya is building one. I think another one is being built in Jos. So that would definitely help. I think the Lagos State government is also uh, supporting some sort. Uh, of I know. Yeah, 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 but I think you. So. Because I've been, I've filmed in other countries. You are not going to always going to only film in a film village. You're going to have to go outside. You're going to film in real places, and it's not a problem. I'm not even talking about outside of Africa now. I'm not talking about Ghana, right over there. You could, you film. You, I still remember uh, I filmed in Ghana last year. We went to film at the beach. I was looking. The way I was behaving, they were just <laughs> laughing at me. Because first and foremost, we just drove into the beach. There was no gate, uh, gate fee, there was no parking fee, there was no tent fee. They we just drove into the beach. Unlike what we cameras. have back home, right? <laughs> I, mean, I, like, I mean, I kept doing... But calm down. Everything. <laughs> the amount of times that happened. <laughs> So it's like uh, going to like, go just calm down. No one is. <laughs> okay, but Badge, um, so going to at that to level, what, what, what kind of intervention do you think the association can, um, you know, provide on behalf of the industry? Uh, and, and you have quite a number of associations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Actors, Actors, Actors Guild, Guild, there's Guild, the um, Guild, yeah. Adrian Theatre Practitioners. Mm -hmm. What kind of intervention can they provide in terms of engaging with government such that there will be a wherewithal for practitioners? Mm. Because the thing about the guild thing is still relatively new, so they don't actually have that much control over almost anybody, to be honest. And the guild is not so new. No, I mean like in terms of their influence on everybody. It's more. So, so there are actors who are not members of the guild. There are some. Oh. Are you I, a member of the guild? I am. You, for you to even put your film on Prime Video, you have to be a member of the guild. So um, the thing is, their influence is not as big or as strong as you would assume they would be if, uh, when you talk about guilds in other countries. Yeah. So even if they were to have a conversation with the government, whatever they decide will not necessarily trickle down to everybody else. It's pretty much stop in some areas and it will just hang there with some particular people. So, ah. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> so we need to wind down on this point. It's usually Bukala's question, but I would ask it, and that's mm -hmm. going personal. Mm -hmm. um, you're 35? Yes, I am. You're 35. Um, are you married? I don't answer private questions on, on interviews. You don't That's like not to. true, Bad. <laughs> you've you've, it's you've a asked, fun question. You've asked yeah. a, a number of private questions in some of your interviews that I've uh, you know, watched. How old I told you this is Bukola's question, so <laughs> yeah. please, Bukola, take over. How old are they? Bukola, yeah. I know I started, Let I just say, Bukola, I mean, I Bukola handled like, him. Not at the beginning. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I saw an interview about three or five years ago. Uh, uh, you yeah, asked whether you were in a relationship. I know me that. And you said yes. Yes, I am. No, no, that one I'll tell you now. Now, it would be rude to say you are not in a relationship if you're in a relationship with someone. No, definitely, I would say I'm in a relationship, but that's usually where uh, I end. Okay, you don't want to answer that whether you're married or not. We respect that. But quick one before we. we uh, no, I need to know why. Okay. Actually. <laughs> I think it's fair. <laughs> Help us understand well, why. Because I saw another interview where you asked about marriage, and I think it was. I think it's on your website or something like that. Okay. Like, no, you're not married. That was like maybe seven years ago, so obviously okay. you weren't married then. So, is there a reason? Uh, is it to protect? Uh, those people, is it to yes, do, do you understand how tricky the no, definitely. Um, is? I, it was, I think that was still when I just blew up. I think that was around 2016, 2017. I still, I was living my life just like everybody else. I would post anybody, my mom, my nephew, everyone around me. And I started seeing how the internet would react to other people's personal life. They don't have any kind of respect for the people that you love because they don't know them. All they feel, all they'll do is project whatever feelings they have onto whatever you post and try and ruin it. 
and I didn't want that for for the people I care about because I'm the one that is in the entertainment. They are not. They live their life just like everybody else. So I, I made that personal decision to separate my private life and everybody in it from my career, and that's right. how I stayed. And it's been a good good idea, especially now seeing what is happening to so many other people. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. You want to mention? I have a number of follow-ups. No, 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 just, just, just no, no, no time. Just, <laughs> no, no, after the show, after the show, you can ask him that. Uh, maybe 30 seconds because our time is totally up. Is the future of Nollywood in safe hands? Straight question. Yes. Why? Well, the, we have a lot of young filmmakers and actors who are, have understood that we are competing with international people now. So the movement, the way they move with the films, the scripts, the acting is now, we need, we are not competing here. We're mm. competing there. Okay. It had better that be sense. Because you're uh, one of them. Yeah, one of them. That, yes, 35 <laughs> year old. Okay. No I've, answer to that I've, anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Bye, Jadibule. Thank you so much. Actor, filmmaker, now director, uh, blazing the trail in his own capacity. Thank you so much for coming on the Thank program. You we appreciate me. you. Always checking on you whenever you have those mega projects. Don't, don't fail to stop by the morning brief. Thank you. We'll amplify it. <laughs> All right, guys. So take a quick break now when we come back. Sheila. Oh, and of course, Libyanka will be joining us as we talk about music, the Grammys, and Nigeria's uh, at the vanguard of Afrobeat. Join us again. <laughs> Thank you.